Uh, well, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, it's kind of one of those products you don't understand uh, until you use it. Yeah, I mean, we think it kind of captures a broader use case. It's less about like, you know, I'm cool or I look really good, and it's a lot more about communicating where you are, what you're doing, how you feel. Um, so more, you know, images is communication rather than artwork. What's the difference between that? Uh, well, we'd like to think that, you know, Snapchats have kind of more emotional content. Um, it's more chatting and messaging than it is uh, kind of putting yourself on display. This. Tell us about starting it yeah. till now. Uh, it's been insanely fun. Um, <laughs> I get to work with some of my really close friends from school, um, and we just have an amazing team. So, honestly, I think that's. But tell us a little bit part. about how, how you started. I mean, it's, yeah. it's incredibly crazy how fast something can scale these days. I mean, yeah. credit to you as well, but this, I mean, nothing has ever credit really grown team, this fast. I think. Um, yeah. Uh, well, Bobby and I had, Bobby is my co founder. Um, total genius, uh, really great guy. And um, he and I had kind of had two failed projects before uh, we started working on Snapchat. Started working on Snapchat, didn't know if anyone was going to use it, kind of did it as an experiment, like, you know, maybe we could make this thing. What did the first version do? Uh, it, it just sent a photo uh, for, I guess, 15 seconds, the very first version, and then we scaled it back to 10, because 15 was, like, way too long. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, I mean, no caption, no nothing. We actually, the, we started doing captions because we would draw out little notes and stuff and mm -hmm. take a photo of the note and then send it to our friends. Oh, like you would write it on paper. Yeah, and we were like, what are we doing? Like, why don't we? Write on know. the phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then when did, when did it start working? When did you know that people were actually taking, taking this and making it their own? Uh, well, it started working for us and a few of our friends pretty early. There were like five of us <laughs> that <laughs> loved it. Um, but people didn't really start using it until about January of 2012. Okay. Um, what happened then? Uh, I think more people heard about it over vacation. They came home, talked to their families. A lot of people bought iPhone 4s during that point in time as well. And front-facing camera um, is obviously a core part of our product. Um, so uh, I think that drove some of the growth. It was really exciting for me because I was, I was still in school. And so I'd be like sitting in class, like checking this little counter, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. And so that was more than a year ago. So then you've continued to have inflection points. Anything big? Uh, what was it like when um, Facebook released exactly the same app? Uh, I think I've said before, best Christmas present uh, ever, <laughs> I think. Uh, so as background, Facebook um, introduced an app called Poke. It also allows you to take pictures. They evaporate after or expire, spontaneously combust after 10 seconds or so as well. You can also write on them. You can send them to your friends, except it actually uses your Facebook network. Uh, yeah, I think so. So they, <laughs> you think so? I'm pretty sure you've used it. <laughs> actually, I don't have Facebook, but. Uh, Tell us about that. Uh, I'm a big Snapchatter. So <laughs> <laughs> you don't need Facebook? <laughs> do, what, what, what other social media products do you use? Uh, well, I, I posted my first tweet a couple days ago. I'm pretty excited about that. All right, so you're just yeah. not a social media <laughs> user at all? Uh, not particularly. Big texter, big Snapchatter. But, uh. Okay. Did you ever have a Facebook account and delete it? Yeah. How did you yeah, go to college and not have a Facebook well, account? Well, I, I, I had to have a Facebook yeah, in college. <laughs> yeah. but, but now you're all about impermanence. Uh, I wouldn't say impermanence. I think there's definitely a place for permanence. We're not like anti-permanence by any means. I think I just, you know, we at least believe that uh, ephemeral should be the default, um, kind of with the way that uh, the landscape has changed. Mm -hmm. So going back to that question about Facebook, I mean, clearly they don't believe ephemeral should be the default, but, but how did it change what you're doing to have, to have someone copy you? And then it seems like not have as much success as you've been having. I mean, Snapchat is still a top 10 download in the US for sure. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we just, stay focused on, on what we're doing. Fun, it's great to have that kind of motivation. It's like, oh no, you know, like they're gonna crush us and then everyone hits the, hits the keyboard. What did they not grasp about Snapchat? Um, I'm not sure if they got anything wrong. I just, I really believe in the Snapchat community. Um, I think that's what's really important about Snapchat. So, you know, when we were first building the application, one of the things people would say to us all the time was, well, this app is stupid. You can just take a screenshot. You know, we were like, right. okay, um, how are we going to deal with this 
uh, kind of issue. And rather than try and really make it about security and, and like privacy and stuff like that, we wanted to create a mechanism where the community could kind of govern itself and create its own norms around sharing. And I, like I said, I don't think it's you know about creating necessarily a community online or something like that or gathering around a piece of content. I, I think it's more about a group of people that believe that sharing this way is a really positive and fun way mm -hmm. uh, to live their lives. So I think, I think one of the biggest like ideological shifts that's happening here is kind of from this notion of like online offline. Like, you know, we go live out in the world, we take photos and then we go back and like upload them to our computer and then we like create this like online world, interact online and then go back to the offline world. Um, and what we've seen change, and I think kind of from some of the conversations yesterday, now, you know, it's just always online. Um, and that means that, you know, uh, we believe the default should be ephemerality. Um, and, and you can pick out and select those moments that are really special that you want to save forever, that mean a lot to you. Um, but in, in, this, in this world, you know, I, I think the deletion as the default uh, works pretty well. You hightailed it out of Silicon Valley and went to work in LA. Um, why? Um, I like LA. I like hearing about other things in coffee shops. Uh, so like music. Or then like, technology. Yeah, you know, um, or even like a new movie script or something is is different than an app. Um, and so I think it's it's nice for me to kind of be in a community where there's a lot of, obviously San Francisco has a lot going on, but uh, you know, every time I'm there, I feel like someone is like pitching an app or something like that. And for me, it's nice to get a break and I think fun for our team to, uh, to kind of focus. We also, uh, I think are a little different in that, you know, our company is like right on the Venice boardwalk. It's like 15 million people walk by every year. And so if we want product feedback, it's not about like making a focus group and like asking them questions. It's like, hey, does this suck? Like, what do you think? <laughs> is that um, what you do? You just walk outside? <laughs> <laughs> People often walk up to you and are like, oh, you want to like... How do you think it changes Snapchat to be a company that's built in LA? Um, gosh. Uh, I'm not totally sure yet. I guess we'll, we'll find out. Yeah. Are you seeing a lot of uh, global growth? What's, what's the distribution there? Yeah, we are. I think, it, uh, well, it's 80% North America right now, 20% uh -huh. uh, uh, outside. But... Um, I guess like Australia, Norway has like always been this crazy like base and uh, Brazil, yeah, and London and Europe and all of Canada, yeah. Do you think that you, or where, where are you going to try to grow? Is it to new devices, to new places? Uh, yeah, eventually. I think, you know, again, like we're really focused on the core experience, making it better. We have some cool products upcoming um, and then, yeah, actually right. more devices. So I'm asked one question uh, most often. Why didn't you sell your business? It doesn't even make money. It's a fad. You could be on a boat right now. And I'm now convinced that the fastest way to figure out if you're doing something that is truly important to you is to find, uh, is to find someone who will offer you a bunch of money to part with it. See, the best thing is that no matter whether or not you sell, you will learn something very valuable about yourself. If you sell, you will know immediately that it wasn't the right dream anyways. And if you don't sell, you're probably onto something. Maybe you have the beginning of something meaningful. But don't feel bad if you sell out. Just don't stop there. I mean, gosh, we would have sold our first company for sure, but nobody wanted to buy it. When we decided not to sell our business, people called us a lot of things besides crazy. Things like arrogant and entitled. The same words that I've used, uh, that I've heard used to describe our generation time and time again. The millennial generation, the me generation. Well, it's true. We do have a sense of entitlement, a sense of ownership, because after all, this is the world we were born into, and we are responsible for it. You already have inside of you all of the amazing things you need to follow the dreams that you have. And if you get stuck along the way, there is a ton of free information available on the internet. Have faith in yourself and the person you're going to become. Know that you are capable of all of the growth that will be expected of you and that you expect from yourself. You will tackle every challenge headed your way. And if you don't, it won't be for lack of trying. Someone will always have an opinion about you. Whatever you do won't ever be enough. So find something important to you. Find something that you love. Three businesses that comprise Snapchat. So if we take a step back and we look at what Snapchat is, it all starts with the camera. We have this really great 
uh, basically capture product. And we've worked really hard to evolve that. So it started with just a photo, just a snap. It evolved into video. We made this really simple mechanism where you can just press and hold on the screen and it'll start recording a video. And there are all sorts of editing tools too. So you can you know, add text and make it crazy colors, uh, you know, add filters, add filters based on where you are. Uh, so we worked really hard to evolve the camera. Um, and then kind of to the left of the camera screen, really the app is kind of just three screens, um, there's a communications business. And so that has chat and video calling um, and obviously snaps and being able to send pictures and, and videos back and forth. Um, and kind of the most recent addition, something we've focused a lot on the last year, uh, to your point, is our content business. And that's to the right of the camera. Um, and that's really comprised of stories, uh, live stories, and most recently our uh, Discover service. So we've worked really hard um, with, with Discover in particular to introduce an editorial perspective mm -hmm. to what was otherwise really the people's, people's perspectives. Um, and we added that editorial balance. But we really, we really found something special uh, in, in Snapchat, which at the time was called Peekaboo. Um, and we found that uh, by deleting the images after you sent them, we changed what it meant to take a picture. So a picture wasn't about saving a really important moment, it was about communicating. And we got really lucky because smartphones and their camera connected to the internet um, meant that there was really a, a big change happening in communication that we you know, didn't, didn't totally identify at the time, but we do now, uh, which is that people prefer to communicate with photos and videos rather than text.